Prepper Basics, how to survive snakes and snake bites while bugging out. This is Throttle Up Prepper. Prepper Basics, surviving the snakes and snake bites things snakealicious <laughs> when bugging out this is throttle up prepper how you doing I'm Jeff welcome to the program uh, if you're a subscriber thank you uh, appreciate your support and uh, if you haven't yet subscribed what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button click the little blue bell at least that's what I hear it is uh, so that way you get notified every single time we put out a new video and you don't miss a thing we don't have to come and hunt you down and knock on your door and say hey missed one <laughs> not that we would do that anyway us blind folk don't make good stalker types uh, also if you haven't stopped by our website uh, recently uh, make sure you get on by there participate in the poll on the home page check out the blog and other stuff that we have there for you the web address is at the bottom of the screen throttleupprepper.com for those of you who aren't looking or maybe blind like me now on to today's topic you know, everyone seems to have, I shouldn't say everyone, lots and lots of people in the prepper community have this romanticized idea of what it would be like in an SHTF situation, um, what they would do, how they would do it, how everything they've done is right and it's gonna you know, save the day and they're gonna start this new society or whatever it is. You know, we all have these uh, grandiose ideas of what it's like and how great it would be, almost like a big festival weekend or something. Uh, as for me, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not digging that idea at all. Uh, I got contingency plans that involve bugging in as my first choice, uh, making it home. Uh, if I'm not at home, if uh, the stuff goes down as it were and I'm not home, uh, it, it all revolves around me getting home. There's some alternate places that I can go to that aren't too far away, that are a little more secluded and out of the way than where I'm at. Uh, working a plan to hopefully one day uh, have a massive uh, estate with lots of acreage uh, and whatnot where I can build my bunker in peace and live of my days. Um, but bugging out and, and hiding in the woods, holy cow, you talk about last resort, last thing on my wish list. But you know, it, it's possible, and, and I spent some time thinking about this, and in the news here in North Carolina, been a lot of copperhead bites. Just, you know, just neighborhoods and just out and about. And there's all kinds of reasons for it, and uh, different areas of the country, different snakes uh, are, you know, possible threats to you, uh, both venomous and non-venomous varieties, so this is not going to be a lesson on snakes. Uh, in any kind of specificity, but more in terms of generality. Uh, just some do's and don'ts and uh, some things to think about. Uh, I did a lot of research uh, from uh, ER doctors and uh, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, first thing to do when dealing with snakes and snake bites, if at all possible, stay away, avoid them. <laughs> stay out of the woods. Uh, in an SHTO situation, not necessarily uh, an option, I get it. And in most places uh, in the country, uh, you know, that experience all four seasons, generally speaking, between March and November are the times of year you've got to be particularly concerned uh, as things warm up and before they get too cold in the fall, uh, them snakes is out there. And uh, different snakes, different temperaments. Again, uh, it's in general terms, stay away. Be aware, if you're not blind like me, watch where you're walking. Uh, try to stay on known trails uh, when possible. Again, in a bug out situation, you probably need to be blazing a new trail in all likelihood. Uh, so not always uh, an option. I got my trusty walking stick here. Made its debut on another video. Um, but good idea, if you have to, walk off the beaten trail, not only to be uh, in a perfect situation, don't be dressed like I am today, I don't know how much of me is in the frame, but don't be wearing shorts and sneakers if you can help it, or flip-flops or sandals, uh, wear what I normally wear, 
uh, jeans, heavy jeans, uh, steel toe boots, hiking boots, boots that you know cover a good amount of uh, your lower extremity. Uh, the reason being, in the event you do have a strike, uh, you know they're not getting easily accessible flesh, uh, shall we say. Um, make a lot of noise when you walk. Uh, you know, you probably don't want to be shouting, letting out your location in a true SHTF situation, but, you know, uh, a nice heavy walk and, and stomp it on the ground, making some vibrations. Most snakes will get out of your way if given the opportunity. And again, a good walking stick if you have one at your disposal, and if you don't, you're in the woods, make one. <laughs> you don't have to get all fancy, just get a branch. Uh, you know, shave it down uh, enough to uh, not get hung up on everything that you pass. Uh, get them critters out of the way. Avoid them at all possible. Now, in the unfortunate and unlikely event of a water landing, no, not a water landing, <laughs> of a snake bite, what do you do? Well, you know, again, in a perfect world, if you're within a mile of your vehicle, they say, uh, you know, get there as quickly and as calmly as you can. Get yourself to an emergency room because, it, you know, in the event it's a venomous snake, the only thing that's really going to uh, fix the problem is medical attention and anti-venom. Can you just buy anti-venom? I don't know. Maybe there's a black market for anti-venom. Maybe there's a... Uh, a, a non-black market. I don't know. I, all I know is according to the ER doctors that uh, I read uh, from, you know, anywhere from three to four hundred dollars uh, for a dosage of that stuff. And, you know, and there's all kinds of other variables uh, and other reasons why you'd want to be in an emergency room in the first place. Now, certain snake bites are more lethal than others. Just a handful of people every year actually die from snake bites, so it's not extremely common. Uh, so if you don't have the ability to get to a doctor, if it's a true SHTF scenario and you, there are no doctors, yeah, you might want to have a Bible nearby, <laughs> a prayer team or something. But I, I don't, I'm not not really sure what you would do then, other than just really, really, really stress the uh, avoidance. Uh, of the problem in the first place, I guess would be the ideal there. Uh, if you're more than a mile uh, from being able to get to help, uh, they say to, to you know lay down, obviously away from the snake. <laughs> if you get away from the snake, you don't want to be laying there and uh, getting ready for a second strike. Um, but you know, try to remain calm. Easier said than done. I don't know. Thank God I've never been bitten by a snake, but I suppose if I had been. Being calm is not going to be terribly uh, easy for me, um, and you know, there's all types of uh, things that different people talk about. You know, should you use a tourniquet? Should you not use a tourniquet? Generally speaking, you're risking loss of limb uh, if you use a tourniquet, especially if you uh, really tighten it down. Uh, I've heard things about you know cleaning the wound if possible, and just a very light. Uh, like ace bandage kind of pressure, very light just to avoid the venom getting into the lymphatic system. If you're able to take a picture of the snake uh, for identification purposes, if you're not a snake expert, uh, that'd be a great idea. That way the, the doctors and the toxicologists at the ER, uh, should you eventually get to one, uh, can identify the snake, give you the proper uh, anti-venom uh, serums and doses. So. Uh, also, they tell you, uh, and this is a tricky one, some sources talk about keeping the wound elevated above the heart, others talk about keeping the wound below the heart level. Below the heart level makes more sense to me, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. I don't know the answer on that one. Do your own homework on that one. But uh, the key is to stay calm, get medical attention as soon as possible. Um, a lot of uh, like copperheads around here from what I was reading uh, I think they get to about three feet long uh, on the large side and are seldom fatal you're in for a miserable 24 to 48 hours if you can't get medical attention um, but not necessarily a fatal thing uh, and again I am no snake expert I'm no Jack Hanna uh, make sure you do your own homework 
Uh, to me, it's all about avoidance. <laughs> like I said, number one plan, I'm staying out of the woods if I can help it. Uh, as a last resort, I'm going in, but I'm going in making noise and, and getting them little critters and varmints out of the way. So, listen, what, what's, what's your understanding? What's your uh, experience with the slithery types? Uh, what part of the country are you in? You know, over here, uh, it's my understanding there are some rattlesnakes, but copperheads seem to be uh, by far uh, more common. Uh, what, what's the venomous snake fear where you are? You're part of the country, you're part of the world. What do you know? What's your plan? I even heard about the Sawyer Extractor. Uh, Sawyer makes great products, uh, and this is basically like a little uh, doohickey that uh, basically helps to suck the venom out. Uh, according to at least one ER doctor um, that I was studying, not the most effective uh, and could lead to other uh, issues. Sorry, Sawyer. That's just what I heard. So, again, what's your ideas? What's your thoughts? Make sure you get active in the comment section and help a brother and another brother out. God bless. Until next time.